Hey guys, it's Chady. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, uh, so am I. My pronouns are they, them, and I make literary and college-related content. So let's get right into it. Today I'm going to be talking about a few books that I've been enjoying the most over the last couple months. These are just some sort of out-of-the-box books, not like, you know, Huckleberry Finn, that kind of thing, but just some interesting shorter reads that I hadn't heard of a lot in kind of the reading community online, but that are just really thought-provoking and make you think about the world in a new way. So the first book that we're going to be talking about is A Field Guide to Hyperbolic Space by Margaret Wertheim. This book is, as you can see, quite short. Uh, I got it used, but you should be able to find it somewhere online. I'll have all of the titles and authors of these down below, by the way. This is basically what it sounds like. Uh, it starts out with kind of an overview of what hyperbolic geometry is, a sort of uh, an introduction to hyperbolic space, if you will, where she goes about explaining it in a really accessible way. And if you don't know, like I didn't, hyperbolic planes are basically non-Euclidean planes that have an excess of surface, like lettuce leaves or um, sea slugs or things that have kind of that frilly surface area. It's really interesting. So the first part of the book um, just kind of describes hyperbolic space and different planes and how that's kind of derived and how it differs from Euclidean geometry and contradicts the idea that the only two lines that won't intersect are parallel lines and so that's really interesting but uh, the second half of the book actually is more of like an art gallery type situation where it has pictures of all of these different models of hyperbolic space that are crocheted because apparently crocheting is a really good way of representing hyperbolic space because it's really easy to make an excess of surface. Anyway, it's really, really cool. Those are really neat to look at, but she also has really amusing descriptions of them and it just makes you look at the world in a new way, kind of start to see new shapes and non-Euclidean planes and start thinking about things in a different way, which I really like in a book. So I thought this was really fun, even though it was a short read, it made me think for a long time, so uh, that's all for the first book. Okay, the next book I have for you is not really a book specifically, but an author. Uh, Yanni Siritsos here, I have one anthology of his poetry in Greek and one in English, translated by Manolis. Um, but basically, Yanis Ritsos is a 20th century poet. Uh, he's really famous in Greece, but for some reason not so famous in the US. You'll probably hear about poets more like Wordsworth or Shakespeare or Edgar Allan Poe, that kind of thing. But he's a really beautiful poet. Doesn't have that uh, kind of traditional rhyming poetry that we think of and associate with poetry for the most part, but he has a lot of rhythm in his poetry. Um, and even the poetry that of his that's in translation is really, really beautiful because it combines, you know, a serious level of emotion and personal experience with sort of the traditional pastoral imagery of a lot of Greek writing. But what's more, and what really kind of makes this go over the top and makes it interesting to me, is a lot of the times, especially in his earlier works like Epitaphios, he weaves in political themes and social criticism into his work. Uh, he was actually part of the Communist Party of Greece, so he's just got a really interesting perspective, and I love reading his work because you can really see a lot of him in it, and it's definitely not like a lot of the traditional poetry that I've read. So you can get that probably on thrift books um, or other places online, wherever you can find his anthologies. Okay, the third book I have for you today, I don't actually have with me because I read this uh, out from the library with a collection, I think, of Gogol's other works, but it's Nikolai Gogol's The Overcoat. Uh, he was a Ukrainian-born author um, who wrote in Russian. He was actually really interesting, kind of controversial. He wrote a lot about Russia while he was outside of Russia, but that aside, uh, The Overcoat's probably the most famous book out of the ones that I'll be talking about today. It's just a bit more well known, but I hadn't heard of it before I read it, so I wanted to include it. And it's just a really, really emotional and personal and sensitive uh, story about this man who's really extremely poor, uh, works at kind of like a typist, secretarial job, and just really goes into a period of time in his life when he has like this really tattered old overcoat that doesn't do anything for him except get him ridiculed at the workplace and uh, the evolution as he is able to afford a new overcoat and I won't spoil the ending or anything like that but suffice to say that he just gets this really intense connection with 
this coat and it means something so incredibly important to him, much more than just, you know, a coat. It's almost as though, you know, the coat functions like um, a romantic interest would in another person's story. That's the kind of connection and understanding you get of how much he values this coat. What I found really interesting about this was it takes you a bit out of your own head, a bit out of your own perspective, especially if you're, you know, living in like suburban America and maybe you have multiple coats um, and you don't really think about them that much. It just really forces you to think about how another person values that kind of thing and also, you know, makes you really reconsider the value of material possessions and the interactions of different social groups and stratas. So I found that book really, really touching for a number of reasons, but if you're attracted to kind of more traditional prose, it's just a lovely short prose piece, very well written, even if you have to read it in translation like me, I sadly don't yet read Russian. It's just a beautiful piece that I would recommend really highly. The fourth book is actually another collection of uh, little stories um, by Mikhail Bulgakov. If I'm pronouncing that wrong, someone please correct me in the comments. This is The Heart of a Dog and Other Stories, as you can see, um, my copy at least. But it had four short stories by him in it. Nose Off the Cuff, Diaboliad, The Fateful Eggs, and The Heart of a Dog. The Fateful Eggs and The Heart of a Dog were my two personal favorites. If you're starting out on Bulgakov, I would highly recommend The Master and Margarita. That's kind of his novel length, kind of more well-known book, and it's incredible. I won't get into it right now, but uh, just, it's a great book. Check it out, definitely. But if you've already read that, or maybe you just want something shorter and kind of fun, these are more like science fiction-y books or short stories. And they're quick reads and uh, interesting, but what I found really thought-provoking about them was they had kind of that aspect, um, like if I were to compare them to something in the film world, it'd probably be like Black Mirror or something because they question new technologies and like the ethics of new technologies and ideas and kind of ask, you know, well, what if this happened if we had this, you know? It sort of explores simultaneously to that different aspects of our humanity and what makes us human. So I think they're really like philosophical and thought-provoking pieces, but they also have the advantage of being pretty simple and straightforwardly written. So I think in that way they're really accessible to and I just really enjoyed them in terms of the story, the messages, and the general composition. Okay, fifth and finally I have for you guys The Problems of Philosophy by Bertrand Russell. This is a pretty short work unlike some of his other works like A History of Western Philosophy which is so huge. This is a really great book to dig into if you're, you know, starting out on philosophy or maybe you've already started digging into some pretty intense texts but you want, like, to step back and get a bit of a bigger picture. What I've noticed with a lot of philosophical texts is they're either really just huge and intimidating or just really dense texts and kind of hard to read. The nice thing about Bertrand Russell is he's gotten like a collection of sections dealing with different big philosophical ideas like um, appearance and reality, the world of universals, that kind of thing. So he condenses down all of these ideas from thousands of philosophers over the years into some of these like central principles and then expounds upon them with references to, you know, different philosophers that he thinks are applicable, like Aristotle and um, Berkeley, that kind of thing. But he does boil it down really well into a really understandable kind of way. The other thing that I really like about Russell is even though he does boil it down a lot, it's not like reading an encyclopedia entry where it's just bare kind of facts and not that fun to read. He has a really witty writing style that's just actually enjoyable and kind of makes you want to get through it without, you know, just tuning out halfway through. So I just think it's kind of a perfect medium if you're wanting to get into philosophy a little bit more, but maybe not start with the big intimidating texts. All right, you guys, that's the end of the book suggestions. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found at least one title that uh, interests you or that you might want to check out after this. Regardless, please comment a book suggestion for me below. I'm always looking for new titles to read, especially right now. If you're interested in supporting me, uh, please like and subscribe on this video. And uh, my socials will be linked down below. I have Instagram and that kind of thing. I also have a Patreon for my own writing uh, where I make poetry and short prose pieces and I'm also working on a book right now. Um, so that's exciting. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Thank you again so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys later.